So I'm going to let you speak to this for the most part and just open it up because I feel like okay. you have a much different connection with to this song I than I do. do. I vividly, vividly remember this album coming out. I was in college at the time, dude. And this single was getting, this song was getting a ton of airplay. Right. And I don't know that I was ever so excited for an album to come out at that time than I was for this one. Because of the airplay and this single. Because you of this You had the exposure yes. to the single, yep. Uh, so much so that the girl I was dating at the time, this album came out on her college move-in day. Okay. <laughs> and I was supposed to help her and her parents get everything into the dorm Do room. The thing, yeah. I pushed it back an hour so I could get to the record store and buy this CD. Really? Yes. And I wasn't disappointed. So that the CD has lasted longer than that relationship did. Which right away. It's fine. Check. It's check. Fine. A lot of people don't remember or can't relate to that time period where it was like, oh, you only get to hear this one single. Yeah. Right? It's not yeah. like it is today where it's like they just dropped the album. Or they drop just a single. Or it's a single, right? Yeah. But back in the day, it's like you would hear a song maybe 20, 30 times, and that's all you would get for months. Yeah. Building anticipation for the release of the album. So the two possible outcomes of that are, one, you're going to hear the whole album and be extremely disappointed because the single was so good. Which has happened more times than the album. <laughs> Usually that's the... Yeah. That's the outcome. Yeah, I can't tell you how many CDs I owned because of that. In this case, though, is it not one of the best albums of that time frame? I have to say it is. This is one I still throw on probably two to three times a year and listen to it front to back and, and because it's that good. And throwback to when we did this in a spin party on the old podcast, right. rave reviews still. Yeah. But that's that's what's years. funny is at this point in time, I would be more than likely if I was listening to this, skipping over the singles. Right, good because point. the deeper cuts on the album good are actually, in my humble opinion, better than the singles. And I think organically they've aged better because you didn't have so much consumption right. of them. And I 100% agree. September 4, 2001, man, Toxicity, what a huge album! Yeah, and I mean, There's, this song did this to me. Yeah, and there was nothing like it. No, again, like we talked about with a couple other bands, there was probably stuff out at that time that was kind of adjacent to this. Right. But boy, if you heard Chop Suey anywhere, you're right. going to be like, what the fuck is that? Yep. Then the video comes out. <laughs> so here we go. Not much else to say except what an incredible video. <laughs> Look, just people chilling. And remember They're the time frame. Keep in mind, 2001, man. It's a long time ago. Pre-9-11, dude. Yeah. A week, but weird uh, still. That dude went hard, right? He sure did, man. He look sure at Shavo. Shavo looks. Whoa! Oh, look oh, at I Surge. Surge. Surge is the best. Look at Surge. Eh, I could do without Darren. Uh, Darren's. I mean, I think at this point in time, I love Darren. I love the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, with Darren. But what time. happened after this? Different story. But I mean, dude, for 2001, this was. So up, outside the box. What? <laughs> Look at this. Watch this. They do it. They're the same person. Ah. Christ. Gold star if you can tell me who produced this. Rick Rubin. You got it. Bam. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's not even just the song, but the visuals here and how they're doing it. It was groundbreaking, dude. It was. It was... This is 2001, dude. This is pre-HD. You have to keep that in perspective. Jesus! I saw him on this tour. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know what they open for? Corn. Slipknot. Bam! Everybody cool opens for Slipknot. I know. Jesus. I this mean, song has a little bit of something for everybody. It's a little rappy. It's a little metal-y. It's a little... You know, harp, it's. You're right, dude. There's a lot going on, man. What's funny is, is I don't think Surge ever wanted this to be a metal band. I do remember hearing that, yes. Because he's got, I mean, he's a class. I believe he's a classically trained yes. singer. But then the paycheck started coming in, and he's like, okay, baby. They were probably one of the top five biggest bands of this time. Oh, 100%. Here dude. comes the best part. I think Shavo even gets in on the action. It's so chaotic. <laughs> it 
There was Shavo. Shavo. He just jumped. Oh, in. <laughs> these guys are. I like short hair surge better than long hair surge. I did not like long hair surge. No, and I I have a funny story about that after it's over. Shavo's so skinny, dude. So that dude needs to eat a hamburger. He's totally committed to it, though. I love Gabo. Dude, he's always been my favorite he's guy. He's like the hidden gem in this band. I think you're right, dude. I think you're right. Still sounds good, dude. This so thing good. has it. I wonder what Darren looks like now. I can't imagine he's age well. No. Serge looks pretty good. I've Serge seen looks Serge. the same. There's Darren in that little picture with the long hair. No, yeah, it's like Mike Mushak I mean, stained. Uh, <laughs> so I I don't think that song has any shelf life. Uh, it's like you were talking about in the beginning. I mean, if I went to Last FM and went back since I started tracking what I listened to, I bet you I have a couple hundred spins on that yeah, song. That's an entry level hard rock song. Like I could, like I think my niece who claims her favorite band is Pink Floyd. Yes, like System of a Down. Yeah, and, and it, that this was the foot in the door. Yeah, and it's funny because in two thousand one, I remember when this album came out, and I was working in Danbury, and there was this chubby little white kid that worked for me, <laughs> and he was a very it wasn't me. Either. No, 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 d- ch- other different chubby, chubby white kid. But he was very into like indie and like rando, like the Strokes and stuff. I guess whatever. I knew this was gonna be big the day he came into work. Have you heard of these guys? And reference this band yeah. right it yep. was just like when my sister-in-law referenced 21 pilots yeah when that whatever album that's came when out. you knew they were that's done. when you know <laughs> the shark might be getting jumped but in this case i don't think it was like a sellout thing or it was just like you said it's got a little bit of everything it's easily digestible and it's a gateway song i still 10 10 that dude oh 100 I mean, <laughs> percent um, listen, like Rev said, they're playing shows here and there. I don't think we're ever going to get new music. And if we do, I'm not sure I'm interested. I heard one song that came out a couple <laughs> years ago and wish I hadn't. I think but I, I might go listen to this after this. Yeah, go see them live, though. Check them out. They're a good live band. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe I love them. I, I that know. album. That's maybe. it, though. 